You finally got a day off. And you're still here. What are you doing out here? It's a nice flute. Mm. Too bad. You can't play it. I'll learn to play it someday. You know, it's sad. My phone was so hard on herself. They were a couple, but not together. She kept thinking about him, but she refused to contact him. She wanted distance, but hated it too. Mei Fong was obsessed with the notion that distance creates beauty. I understand the pain she was going through, and I know why they couldn't be together. Although I don't agree with her methods, I can understand. I can't understand her. Why would you choose to make life so unbearable? It's not unbearable. Think about it, Cheng Cheng. You and her have a lot in common. I remember Mei Feng told me that she and I are the same. We both have someone we can't have in our hearts. Even though we've long forgotten what they look like, we still can't bear to let them go. And that way we put them up on a pedestal, idealized. In the end, that person is completely different to the one in real life. In your mind, they're perfect and without flaws. Oh yeah, don't be like that. If you let yourself think that way, you'll end up being just like my phone. It's not as bad as you think. All right. Well then, to save you, I've decided to buy you dinner. You're even more like Mei Fong, especially now. That won't happen. Because that person inside my heart, I can see and hear. I can say what I want to her. And lately I've noticed that that person has gradually come to start accepting me much more than she did before. <laughs> Who's that? You know I'm talking about you, Ouyang. Hey, don't you feel even the least bit happy after sitting and talking to me today? <laughs> I just remembered something I have to huh? do. Hey! I'm serious. I want to buy you dinner. Sure. But just this once. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome, sir. Enjoy. Mm. When I was really little, I used to stay at my grandmother's house. Mm. And she passed away, so I moved to my aunt's house. Mm. I stayed in a dorm during high school, and then I had a pretty bad temper mm. and trouble making friends. I couldn't talk to boys, and I didn't really have any hobbies. Overall, I was a really boring person. All right, Ouyang. I get it now. You don't have to go on. You can be pretty unreasonable sometimes. You know what? I know some people who are incredibly beautiful, but insist that they're ugly despite what we tell them. What's that about? In the U.S., it's called fishing for compliments. <laughs> <laughs> See? When you're eating with me, you can laugh. Maybe that means you don't hate me that much. What are you talking about now? Well, what I meant is that... Look, I just want to talk. I don't want to waste any more time. I don't want to waste your time, and you don't want to waste mine. You think I'm wasting your time? Yeah, you have. And, and you have to stop it. Are you drunk? No, I mean it. Every day I see you and you're there without a boyfriend. It's a huge waste of my time. Then just live your life and leave me out of it. Now that Chen Chen Chuan's gone, you can start thinking about me, about us, and our relationship, right? You have to give me an answer today, unless you have a reasonable explanation. I've already given you my answer before. Oh, Young. Listen to me. Seriously. You can't waste time in love. Look at you. You have put all your energy into your career like me. Don't you think that maybe it's time for you to think about someone else for once? Mei Fang made me realize she couldn't let go of someone she loved. She couldn't let go of her heart's desire. For me, that's you. You tell me your heart isn't available, but that isn't true, right? I don't believe you when you tell me you're waiting for him. Because remember, Shen Shen Chuan is gone, right? There's no one waiting for you now. Look, I know we aren't together. That's fine. But you don't want to be alone either. It's time you pick yourself up and take a chance. You can't be like my Fong, got that? You need to give me an answer. You need to think and not waste time. You're right. I do need to think about what she said. Since now I see that I have wasted time. That's right. Think about it. Go ahead and think. I'll wait. You see? I can be patient. <laughs> I meant think about myself. 
It's not about you. What do you mean, not about me? So you're still gonna waste my time now? Well, why can't you give up? Can't you find someone else? I'm a man. I can't be like you with the way you deal with things. And I'm stubborn. When I set my sights on something, I have to have it right away. I've never seen someone so clingy in all my life. Yes, that's right, exactly. I am very clingy, o Young. And let me tell you this. The moment you have a boyfriend is a time I'll let you go. I have to make you... I'll force you to find the right person for you. So that you can be happy, understand? You sound so much like my mom. That's exactly what my parents said. I say. know. You should listen to them, seriously. Know what? I think your mother really likes me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm serious. For example, you like me, right? No, wait, wait, that's wrong. Say there's a doctor. One you work with at our hospital named Chang Jun. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm so sorry. Go on. Huh. He's really good for you. Well liked, he's smart. And yet you still refuse to be with the man. You see, none of that will change how I feel. If I agree to be with you, all I can do is hurt you. Hey, hey, hey. it's fine. Don't worry about that. I'm a man. I don't mind if you hurt me at all. That's enough. Your food's getting cold. How can I eat at a time like this, huh? Well, if you won't eat, then neither will I. No, that's not it. I just... No, Oyang, you... You're really leaving? Oyang! Hey, Oyang! Hey, hey, hey! You just finished eating and left me there. That's so cruel. You left me alone. I can leave you anywhere, and you'd still find your way back to me. So you feel terrible, right? Well, I think you should. You should understand. When it finally becomes unbearable, there's only one option left for you. You'll say yes. That I know. <laughs> All right. That's enough nonsense. I've had my fill for tonight. Right. But only for today. Seriously, Chongjun, I think you're a good person. I am. You're fantastic as a friend or colleague. Yeah, that's not all. I'd even be better as a boyfriend. Wait, take a look. Huh? Hmm? Huh? <laughs> so don't you think I look better than before? Maybe if I had met you earlier, I would have loved you. It's not too late for that. Didn't I say I already had enough and you keep going on? Let's talk about this Wait. later. You said talk about it later, right? So could I maybe interpret that as... we can see how it goes in the future? I didn't say that. You said that. Not me. Remember that, all right? <laughs> all right! Welcome home. So, did you drink? You sound like you're in a good mood tonight. <laughs> What's the story behind that goofy face of yours? Mm -hmm. So did you and Ouyang, you know... Hey! Uh... A real man would never kiss and tell. You've never been good with secrets. <laughs> you'll see. Not from me. But you'll know when you see it. <laughs> Coming from you? That means nothing. <laughs> Hey, 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 so your mom, that's enough. I know you're sad about my pong, but don't drink like that. <sighs> I'm not sad. I think that story between Mei Feng and Wu Yusheng was so moving, that's all. We don't have time to think about how moving their story is. We also have to think about how we can help with their medical bills, remember? Yeah, you're right. We need to get donations. Hey, that won't work. We won't get enough from just that. No way, think harder. Then you think of a better idea. Hmm. How about we buy his car off of him? We'll be helping, and he won't know. That's the epitome of kindness. He's right. But how much is it? The repair is 10,000, maybe even 20,000. Plus the car itself, 50. 50,000? We won't get that much even if we sell ourselves. That's way too much. We won't even earn that in a year, Xiao Chang. If there's no way, I could still ask my dad. Your dad? Wait! How will you ask your dad to buy it? He said he'd chop you up if he saw you again. It's worth a try. If he chops me up, we'll know how it tastes like. I'll go with you then. Hey, Meng, let's go with him. And we can ask his dad to help us. Mm. Hey, what's it have to do with you two? What do you mean by that, Xiao Chong? Your dad likes me after all. If I go, he might agree to help us with everything. Come on, let's go together, Meng. His dad's a good cook too. 
Xiao Chen, you're awful. Your ulterior motive is food. <laughs> Shut up. Dad? Son, long time no see. Can you come outside? I need to talk to you. Huh, I see. You brought company here too, that you brought some friends, so you could lie to me together? Uncle, we're not here to lie. Yes, we wanted to ask you something. Dad, come outside. What's that? Buy a car? You dropped out of school and your internship as well. Then you almost gave me a heart attack and now you want a car? Uncle, Zhao Chong went back to his internship. Huh? Is that right? Didn't you refuse to do it? So what? You don't want to be a writer? If you buy the car, I'll never mention being a writer again. Xiao Chong... That's my condition. Do you agree to it or not? You... Is that any way that you should be talking to your father? Uncle, just calm down. Don't be mad. Xiao Chong doesn't want to buy the car for himself. It's for a patient we helped treat at our hospital. She died and she was only in her mid-30s. Her ex-husband was in a car accident and doesn't have the money to pay. So Zhao Chong wants to buy his car so that the man can use the money to help them cover their expenses. Is this true, son? Believe what you want. Uncle, Zhao Chen is telling the truth. If you don't believe it, we'll show you some proof. All right. I want to see if your story holds up. we talked about oh well if it's in this kind of shape what about the man driving so my son you really took him to the hospital yes he stayed with him and then helped him out at the scene of the accident otherwise then he wouldn't have made it the director keeps praising him for it too ah if that's the case then all these years were not a complete waste Dad. You know the situation, and you've also seen the car, so... Will you help us or not? Mm. Yes. I'll do it. Really? Really? Thank you so much! Oh, hey, hey, put me down! <laughs> Dad, thanks a lot. I'll work hard to become a doctor. I know I can do it! <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's enough. You're scaring me. Wait now, who are you? Where's my real son? Hey, <laughs> Uncle, it's getting late and we haven't eaten yet. Do you think we could maybe eat at... Shao Chan? Well, it's good timing. That's right. It is perfect timing. Let's go. I'll whip up a few things for you guys. I'll show you just what I can do. <laughs> All right! Let's go. Is that Shen King Chuan? I'm not asleep and dreaming, right? Or maybe that's a ghost. <gasps> and this will conclude our meeting for today. We have one announcement. Chosen as chief resident doctor after rigorous selection, we made a unanimous decision. Wang Bo. <clears throat> Wang Bo. Yes. Starting today, you're officially chief resident. My congratulations. Huh. Cheng Jin, mm. help Wang Bo arrange the files for the rooms and give him rounds and schedules for all the beds, all right? Sure, no problem. And also... I'm sorry. My apologies. Go stand there. As I was saying, our new interns have been doing well, but don't let it get to your heads. Starting this week, listen, stick with your mentors. Be sure to follow them on all their rounds. And when there's a patient, offer assistance. All right, Wang Bo. Be I sure think I just saw doctor. Shen King Chuan. And also what? Seriously? Well, I don't know. You're crazy. Then there's also discipline. You interns must listen. Do what they say out there. The teachers will have high standards. We can't afford any mistakes. All right, that's it for today. Mentors, take your interns. Keep watch over them. 
Well, this meeting is over. Let's go. Hey, hey, hey. What did you say? She says she saw Shan Ching Chuan outside. Are you serious? I don't know if it was real, but I saw someone who looked exactly like him outside. I don't know. What if she saw a ghost? It wouldn't really be a ghost, would it? Hey, I saw him in my dream last night, too. It's so weird. You know what I think? It really was a ghost you saw. You should go to Yongha Temple and burn some incense. <laughs> Just do it. What are you three up to, huh? Well, gossiping during the meeting, and here you are, still at it. Now, for two girls, gossiping is normal, but when it comes to you... Just what are you doing engaging in it? Listen to me. Cut that out. Got it? My advice is, when you get a chance, learn more skills from your teachers. Don't let gossip get in the way. Got it? <laughs> Come on. You heard the man. Don't gossip. <laughs> There's a file folder here called Emergency File Collection. There are all kinds of charts in here that you have to fill out. Outpatient, inpatient, course, history. If you look closely, everything's in here. Then there's this file folder we have here. It has all our rounds and all our patients' histories. You have to fill it out every day, see? You'll need this list. I'll send you the file. The file's huge. It'll take forever to transfer. What? Not at all. Use this. We have an app. Open the app, then send. Here, open the file. There. Like that, and that, and this one. Accept it. There you go. Easy, right? Mm -hmm. Then there's also this. Here. These are the keys for everything in the ER, see? Meeting room, classroom, staff room, resource room, director's office. Usually these aren't locked. They're all backup keys. They're all here. Just be sure to put them away. These are for the drawers. I usually lock these up in here. And now, these are yours. Hey, wait a second. Don't you think maybe you should put those things in a keychain or something? We often rotate these gown jackets, so if you lose them... Of course I will. All right. The resource room. I'll introduce you, all right? Just follow me. All the machines and resources are right here. Soft ones here, hard ones over there. Ones we don't use often are in there. Mr. Du at the warehouse has a list so you can get a copy when you have a chance. Go over the locations of everything. In case of emergency, you won't get lost. What have I got myself into? Do you do this every day? <laughs> hey, don't you usually get stuff from here anyway? Practice makes perfect. All right. The standard equipment for the emergency beds are bedside monitor, blood oxygen monitor, call button. These have to be inspected regularly. If there's a problem, call the equipment department, okay? Disinfect daily, of course. That's Miss Lin's job. You just have to make sure it gets done. Remember, we have 40 emergency beds. Good. 20 observation beds. Of course you know that. The log for every day, including course, treatment, and report, have to be submitted to the nurse station. Backups of all these files are always available on our computers. I never imagined that being chief resident, you had to be able to do everything. And also keep track of people and equipment. I mean, look at all that. <sighs> Being an ER doctor sure is tough. After that, there's one more thing. This over here, this is a central control for the oxygen. Remember, you have to clean it often. If you don't clean it well, then it might end up... What's wrong? Chung Jun, I'm nervous, all right? You're nervous? You do this every day and you're nervous? No way. It feels very different now. No, it's not. Hey. After all, you're in charge now, am I right? Come on, don't make me feel worse. Before, all I had to do was take care of my section, just my own couple of beds. But now, I take a look around, and I see just how many beds there are. Everything's coming down on me. I suddenly feel very pressured. So they're right. You are better, Chung Jin. Hey, come on. You've got this, huh? We all have to go through it. What did Director Zhang say? Until you reach 35, no one will take you seriously. You're a doctor after all. If a doctor can't move alone, then he's not a doctor. He's a utility man. Don't forget that. This should be easy for you. Really, it's nothing. Listen, you're on the path to responsibility. It's all you, okay? Dr. Chung's amazing, isn't he? Too bad he's not chief resident, right?
What did I tell you about gossip? We're, We're sorry. sorry. He's right, you gossip. What? Nurse Lin, bed aids blood pressure is up to 200. Doctor said to do a sputum drainage. There's no one else here, so I guess I'll do it. All right. Head Nurse Lin, here's the triage log from yesterday. Take a look. Wait, Chang Shang. Yes? Dr. Ouyang has a patient who needs their sputum drained, so you go do it. From now on, you work in ER. <sighs> really, Miss Lin? <laughs> you are the best. Thanks a lot. <laughs> well, don't thank me just yet. Believe me, it's a round-the-clock job. There's a lot of pressure. I'll let you think about it first. <laughs> There's no need. Head nurse, you are too kind. I'm happy to work around the clock. Wait, here's the tube. Huh? <laughs> hey, Dr. Wangbo. Miss Lin sent me here to work with you. I'm draining the patient's sputum. And she also said she needs help over there. Uh. So, Yimang, why don't you go to triage? Uh, me work at the triage? Hmm? But don't I have to stay with you? Because you think it's too easy? Listen, interns have to start from the most basic department. So go over there. Hmm? Right. Right. Take this form over there. Uh-huh. What's wrong? Why do you look so upset? Dr. Wong's so awful. Send me to the triage desk. <laughs> He's just doing it to help you so you can learn, you know? You'll learn a lot here, too. When a new patient comes in, you have to ask questions, diagnose, direct him, monitor him, and you have to deal with the families here. It's a little bit tiring, but you get a lot out of it. Here. Go take your temperature. All right. Why are there so many people here? Well, you see, we gave out over a hundred numbers this morning, not including ambulance deliveries. We'll be lucky if we can see them all by five o'clock. You're right. After I've been through all of this, what is there to be afraid of, right? Mm. I'll take your blood pressure, all right? Okay. I'll do it. Number 15? Here. Is there a 15? Yes, I'm right here. How can we help you? How are you feeling? Uh, listen, I got bitten by a mosquito, then I squeezed it and my foot got all swollen. I just want to know if you can give me some afterbite or something to make the swelling subside. Help me! Help me! Uh, excuse me, nurse! Nurse! Look at my daughter! What happened? Her nose won't stop bleeding! Why is she bleeding so much? Hey, it's my turn, Emmy! Look, Look, sorry, ma'am. One moment, please. My turn. I'm really sorry, everyone. She had a fever the past few days, and now the nose bleeds. I put ice on it, but the bleeding won't stop. What's wrong with her? Here, take her temperature, then do a routine blood sure. test. Sure. Uh, please, everyone, I'm sorry. How long has it been bleeding? About two hours. Two hours? And you're just bringing her now? We were stuck in traffic. Are you guys done? It's my turn right now. Nurse, I told you my foot's swollen. Can you get me some medicine? Ma'am, I'll just tell you straight out. We don't treat things like that in the ER. If you want to go buy some afterbite, then you can just go to a drugstore hey, and buy it. Hey, what did you say to me? I can't come to the ER for a mosquito bite? Have you heard mosquito bites can give you malaria and Ebola and stuff? All right, then take your temperature, please. I'm here to buy medicine. Why do you want my temperature? Are you kidding me? Excuse me, why do you have a dog in here? It's against our policy to bring pets in the hospital. What are you going on about? We're here. So are you going to serve us or not? Come on, let's go. Next patient then. Who said you could call the next patient now? I'm not done yet. Why would you call the next one? You said you were leaving, so I called the next one. Who said I was leaving? You took forever to call my number, and I want to see a doctor. Don't ignore me. My head hurts. I want a CT scan. Here, take your temperature first, and come tell me when you're done, okay? Daddy, daddy. My head hurts. It's all right. <laughs> someone! Someone! Help! Here, let me see your temperature. <sighs> Nurse, I'm begging you. She needs help right now. Ron, we'll get a stretcher. Over here, please. What about us? Nurse, my son's in bad shape, too. Take a look at this. Isn't this a hospital? What's all the commotion over here? Dr. Wong, this huh? girl's nose won't stop bleeding and her temperature's high. Take her to the ER. Doctor, doctor, please, I'm begging you. My son's really sick. Please examine What's him. What's his temperature? 
38.6. He was fine during breakfast, and then, then he was just sitting on the ground with a stomach ache. Does it hurt when I do this? Yeah. How about here? Yeah. And here? Yeah, it does. Run an abdominal scan, blood, urine, doctor, and two calluses. Doctor, what sort of place is this? Move, move. Ever heard of first come, first serve? Doctor, someone, anyone. Oh, goodness. Doctor, help me. Help me. All right, take it easy. Set him down first. Dad's in trouble. Please, Careful. you have to help him. Dad, we're at the hospital. Set him down. What's wrong with him? Tell me, what's wrong with him? Jelly, get a stretcher. This man isn't breathing. He needs yeah, help. I got it. You hear me, sir? Open a shirt. Hurry. Right. Hey there, help me out. Yes, of course. Leave I on got the ground. Him. Okay. Okay. Okay, out of the way. Yes, sir. Okay, stretcher's here. Here, lift him up. Ready? One, two, three, lift! Okay, so you want to go the Take him in. Doctor, Get going. what about my son here? This man has stopped breathing. We must save him first. Your boy will just have to wait a bit, okay? Hey there. Give this boy an ultrasound. Stat. Routine blood, uh -huh. urine, and fecalysis. Also, they just took in a girl with a nosebleed. So keep an eye on her, too, huh? Got it. Wait! Hey, doctor, why are you leaving? What kind of hospital is this? We've been waiting all day long. What's hold up? What are you talking about? Aren't you listening? I want a doctor. Three people just cut in front of me. Just calm down, okay? Don't get in the way of her treatment. Go to the triage desk. The tri... Hey! I... Let's go! Heads up! Look out! We're coming through! Come on! Keep it all moving! Right, let moving. him through! Oh yeah, over here! Cardiac arrest! Here, I've got it. Get a pneumatic and assist his breathing. Open an IV channel and inject one milligram of epinephrine. <gasps> Doctor, come see the patient at 14. What's wrong? Looks like appendicitis. Keep an eye on this side. I'll take care okay. of it. Hey, champ, how are you? Yeah. Stomach hurt? Let me take a look, all right? Does that hurt here? Yeah. Okay. How about that? It doesn't. I see. I don't think it's appendicitis. It may be gastroenteritis. Take a test first, then we'll check mm -hmm. the results, all right? Hey, Chong Chong. Yes? Take a sample for fecalysis, okay? Have Doctor, someone help, help him. Can we give him an IV drip first or something? Look at how much pain he's in. Not just yet. We can't do that without the test results. Go on, take him in. Yes, yes, sir. Can you tell me why her arms are covered in bruises? She's been sickly ever since she was young, always getting a cold or a fever. And when she gets a bump, it'll stay bruised for a long time. Maybe when I was carrying her, I held her too hard. Maybe it cost that. Hmm. Director Ma, this child is hemorrhaging and a fever. And her nose speed won't stop. I think she may have a cardiovascular problem. Do a blood test first. <sighs> Dr. Oyama, I'll do it. Wangbo, get a team ready. We need help over right. here. Is the mosquito bite not an emergency? I could have malaria or Ebola or something. Calm Why down. Why don't you take the Ma blood? The ER. There's a patient in critical. You need to help them. Got it. Go to the front desk and talk to the nurse. What? Come on. The patient stopped breathing and we haven't detected a pulse yet. Let me take a look at it. Okay. Here. Doctor! Doctor, I'm talking to you. You just keep ignoring me. What's the deal with this hospital? How hard is it to see someone? Hey, are you done? They called my We're number. And... To save this man. He's already stopped breathing. Now take that dog and get out of here. Hey, what's with? Wait, don't push me. Hold on. What the heck are you doing, huh? My dad over here is dying, and if he dies because of you, I'll make sure you join him. You got it? What I mean that? what it's I said. It's my turn. I've waited forever. I was here first. Just get out of here. here. Excuse me, sir. We're oh. about to work on him. Oh. If you don't mind. Thank you, doctor. Okay. Switch. How is she, Director Ma? Still waiting for the results right now. Director Ma, mm -hmm. standard blood test results. Extreme shortage of hemoglobin, neutrophil granulocytes less than 100, platelets 4,000. Director, take a look at her. Her blood pressure's dropping. Oxygen, IV, and epinephrine. 
Call hematology right away, doctor. Yes, sir. Prepare a bone marrow puncture. Right away, director. Wrong bow! Just a sec, I'm on the phone. Hematology? This is ER. I have a girl who needs diagnosis. Send someone now. Hey, I'll do it. Get a anesthesiology in here! Ask the family about the patient's condition and the cause of it! Hey, hold on! Huh? And notify cardio! Okay. Chao Chan, go check on his family! Got it. Hello, cardio? Yes, this is ER. We have a man over here in cardiac arrest. Yes, right now. What exactly happened this morning, can you tell me? My dad's 82 years old. He's had asthma ever since I can remember. This morning I was taking him to my sister's house, and when we got in the car, he collapsed. So I panicked and brought him here right away. Okay, got it. Okay. Dr. Chung, the patient is 82, has asthma. When they got in the car, he suddenly collapsed, and then they brought him here. It's beating! We have a heartbeat! Stop compression. Continue assisted breathing. Is his family here? He needs an intubation. Go talk to him first. Go talk to his son. This way, I need your signature. He has asthma, 9% saline, 100 ml, methylprednisolone, 40 ml, intravenous, to reduce tracheal spasm. Yes, doctor. If I'm not mistaken, the patient has been here for a total of four minutes. That means we won the five golden minutes. Within five minutes, we saved his life with assisted breathing and CPR, right? <laughs> really? So he's all right, is he? He's fine. You got him here just in time. Oh. Another minute and he wouldn't have made it. So how is he now? How is he? That's right. It's called the golden five minutes oh. when the heart is impaired. And if the brain lacks oxygen more than five minutes, there could be irreversible brain damage or even brain death. He actually made it. Thank you so much. Thank you all. <laughs> Where is he? Why Where's are you my... here? <laughs> Darling! Hold on a second. Mom. What happened? Hi. Calm down, all right? That's already in the clear. He made it. You scared us. Dr. Chang. Oh, no. Director Machal. Let's go. Director Ma, there might be a problem with the cardiovascular results. Director, you called for me? Oh, you watch these two. I'll be right with you. Go ahead. According to the results, she may have a blood problem. Huh. What about her bone marrow? Director Ma. Huh? I had the puncture done. Here are the girls' results. Oh, Take a look. See them. Platelet count's too low. And this looks like she has severe aplastic anemia. <sighs> Give her some platelets first to compensate for the bleeding. Do you know of any good method for treating this? Judging from the patient's condition, if we want to treat it, we'll need to do a stem cell transplant. There is not much time, and we have to find matching stem cells right away. Usually, we go to the marrow bank to find a match, but this is difficult. The chance of a matching donor is very low, and there's a long turnover. The majority of patients die while waiting for a matching transplant. We should still do our best. Chung Jun. Yes? That girl. She has a plastic anemia. So talk to the father. His stem cells might be a good match. Good luck. Right. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, come here. Doctor, what's wrong with my daughter? Please tell me the truth. What's she suffering from? Well, it looks like she's stable right now. Your daughter is suffering from something called severe aplastic anemia. Aplastic anemia? 
D does this mean she'll die? Sir, calm down, please. Severe anemia is considered a serious illness, but it is, in fact, a treatable one. So as you can see right now, we're giving her platelets to help with the bleeding. But if we want to treat the source, we'll have to transplant stem cells. Time is of the essence. We have to find your daughter a matching set of stem cells right away if we want to save her. Doctor, she's my only child. No matter what happens, if you can't mm. save her, uh, her stem cells, doctor, her, her cord, will her umbilical cord help? Uh, you mean you save her umbilical cord from when she was born? That's right, I did. Oh, that's great, it's perfect. One's own stem cells are inherently matched, and after transplanting, there won't be any rejection. They're also uncontaminated and multiply better than bone marrow. And once they're unfrozen, we can treat her. They can be transplanted without any more delay. I need you to call them. Tell them that you need it. Tell them where you are so they can deliver the sample. And once we have it, we'll start the treatment. We'll save your daughter. At that time, I knew we should store it. But my wife said it was a waste of money. But now it'll save her life. Yes, of course. You've got good foresight, but don't waste time. You have to go. Call them up now, so we won't wait any longer. Yes, right. That's right. I'll call him right now. Today was really crazy, wasn't it? Looks like watching from the sidelines and being a part of it are totally different after all. Oh, of course they're different. It's easy to stand by and watch. You didn't go to triage. There were tons of people. It was insane. Hey, Xiao Chong. Mm. You haven't updated your novel in so long. If you add today's events to it, I'm sure it'll be a huge hit with readers. Listen, Xiao Chen. Writing a novel is hard work. You know that. And besides, I was the one saving those people. It was Dr. Chung and Dr. Wang, remember? Also, if I wrote it the way it happened in real life, people online would tear that dog lady apart. The key of the story isn't the dog lady. It's the five golden minutes, you know? Hey, don't bother writing just any novel anymore. Life updates would be better. I like the way you think. Really? <laughs> hey, Chao Chong, don't forget mm. to write me in it, all right? <laughs> How much will you give me for it? Life can be long. Maybe a hundred years. Sometimes. Life can be short. As short as a few seconds. Five minutes might be enough for a cup of tea. But in the hospital, five minutes determines whether you live or you die. The five golden minutes. Medical research shows that after five minutes, without oxygen, the brain can suffer permanent irreparable damage, leading to brain death. To us, they are not minutes on a clock. They are more valuable than anything. These five minutes are the last chance a patient has at living. Today we had an elderly patient. From check-in to ER, it took four and a half minutes. During this time, a lot of patients didn't cooperate. You know, there was even a woman with a dog who followed the doctors into stopping, saying, first come, first serve. On the path of life and death, when it comes to the ER, there's no such thing as first come, first serve in order to save more lives. So I beg you, for everyone's sake, please just let us do our job, because we're here for you, and we'll do everything we can to save you. So don't give up on us either. The Five Golden Minutes. Mr. Piggy's live ER broadcast, signing off. You put on quite a show today. Huh? A show? It's nothing special. I did what I always do. <laughs> so you mean you're usually this amazing daily, am I right? <laughs> usually, you really don't care what I do every day. And maybe today you just decided to. So you thought that I was great. Don't let it get to your head, all right? Hey, Oyang. What? Well, it's just... I was wondering if you... Well, join me for dinner. Are you rich? What? Well... <clears throat> It's my treat. R really? Really. Okay, then it's settled. It's a date. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> mm.